That's a lot of engines, Ricky. Oh, that's cool. As cars come in the door plant, as trains come in here, before any, tr any car leaves this terminal, it's inspected by car forces. Each car, every car on a train has to be 100% functional, 100% safety compliant. If it's Much everything that comes in the North Platte gets fueled in North Platte. Hey, bro, you guys want to over here and here. Here. see the yard? You got cross holes? Yeah. Okay. Speaking of hubs, over here at the left hand side, this is our East Hub. This is actually one of the bigger hubs in the UP system right here. Um, very steep grade. You see the cars rolling down over here. If you kind of listen a little bit, you'll hear a, almost okay. like a, a squealing sound or kind of some people have equated it to a whale, singing, a singing whale. But once, once it comes down this hill, there's 64 bull tracks in there, so it could go into one of those, any one of those 64 tracks. On the west side of those, it's got a broken motor portion, a motor portion. run through or new coals as, as they go locally here. Uh, the, the whole purpose of this run through is to keep the trains together. Just like we were talking earlier about how just not all, all cars on a train will be going to the same destination. We do have some turning those over the hub right. to reclassify them because we're just going to put them back together again. So uh, okay. I, a, a good example of that is coal trains. Pretty much all your coal trains are, are this way. So we build the, what's called the run-throughs. And what the run-throughs do is they're designed to keep that train together, keep the locomotives on there, so it expedites the movement. They're usually high priority, they're higher priority trains. And so a crew will come in, they'll stop at the run-through, they'll kind of train. Eastbound run-through, westbound run-through. So coming up to where, here in a minute, we're gonna hit the west run-through. So we're going to go down 
this side will be able to see a lot better, but we're going to go down and turn around and come back. You're going to know their opportunity if you miss something here because we're going to come back this way again. We have aliens with uh, laser weapons in the tree lane over here. What is this? Come on. No, this is where you go when you got to work nights. Manager? No. Okay. It's the height of the invasion. Do you want the truth or the real story? Let's hear them both. I give you both, you can make up your own. Because uh, the way it uh, is named Mary 51 is it. Uh,
exit. It doesn't tell me if I'm moving. Currently saying Lexington. Go ahead and stop. At Lexington, no, Cozen, all of that stuff. And we're stuck. Put it in the simplest form, is we tear trains apart, we rebuild them. That's the easiest way to think about it. When, uh, when you're out there driving around or you see a train passing by, you never know. But I don't think any of you are going to care one way or another. They'll pull it down the pullback and get ready to shove it back up the hill. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and turn here. Just in case. Does all the coupling happen automatically? Uh, so on, on your your normal on a train normally you have two employees on. It happens to slow down as it's going down the hill. They'll just drop the retarder so there's no resistance on it, and they'll just let nature take over. If it doesn't make it, once they're done humping the train, provided it's in the clear, they'll just send that locomotive down to go ahead and shove it the rest of the way in the rail. Now one thing to keep to to be aware of here. All these, all these. So it could be any one that you're looking at. So going forward, you know, if you have, if you're ever in a UP yard and you see those blinking lights, you may or may not see anybody on that locomotive. That that remote control operator could be as far as two miles away and still be controlling that locomotive. As long as long as he can see, as long as he can see the head end of the movement of that, he could be that far away from that locomotive. But all of our switch jobs here are, oh, it, it, it takes no time at all to couple a car together. Yeah, it, I mean, you're talking to couple it up and lace up the air hose, uh, providing it's not real cold outside, maybe 10 seconds. Does the exact same thing, it's just different, different direction is where the destination is. All these, all these switches out here, like these, where, where all these cars are rolling into, is what's called a pull trap. If you were to get up there on top of the hump and look down, it would actually look like a tree. You got one set of tracks going down, the branches into two, those two turn into four, those four turn into 16, and so forth and so forth, for a total of 64 tracks at the end. Well, all those switches out there, you don't, you don't have 64 switchmen out there throwing switches. So they're all automatically operating. So before that car is even released, those switches are thrown and uh, to, to line that car into whatever is destined to, to, to hump and classify those cars because they're always going to stay on the same train. So before he was working for the U.S. Army, uh, looking for a fort, which happened to be Fort McPherson, he was also being paid on the side by Union Pacific. Guys, look all the way down here, uh, off, to, off to your right. Can everybody see the water tower down there? Okay, right about that area is our eastern limit for the yard. That's, and the western limit goes just shy of that that uh, overpass you see down there. So that that in itself is about about eight miles, a little give or take.
Yep, that's track equipment. Yeah, they burn that, that, that coal goes with power plants. Uh, it all comes out of Powder River Basin, so it can come out of any little by, you know, Big Thunder, wherever. Uh, Area 51, as at uh, back in 2006, they managed to run 51 coal trains out of this yard in one day. So that was an all-time record for pretty much any class one railroad. And I think it still holds today. And no, nobody from Facebook has tried to storm this building yet. <laughs> so, but we're expecting it any days. We got the uh, aliens out there in the bushes. Films, yeah. I'm going to take pictures of this maintenance train. Over here on the right hand side, these are all trains waiting to go. Yeah, it's right there, that big, that big kind of angular thing. Ready to be relieved. The other one's probably running around the train right now. attention to what the form on the ground is saying they, they could get it going too fast things like that there, so there are there are safe but you know it's no more or less inherently dangerous than anything else we do out here now looking off uh, up here to the front and to the left the big actual steel building you see back over here is it's only part of a much much bigger building that we call the diesel shop and this is a diesel repair shop uh, they, we bring locomotives in here for any purpose you can think of. Uh, some of them just need routine maintenance. Some of them may need major repair jobs. Uh, the people in this shop, they can do pretty much anything that, that needs to be done to a locomotive. They can replace the entire diesel engine on it. They can replace the wheel studs. They can do major structural uh, work on it. Uh, anything you can think of. And this building is actually pretty big. It's, it's, it's very deceptive how big this thing is. Uh, Area-wise, you can actually fit five football fields inside that building. Still have room for bleachers. I've worked some in there. I've worked some in there. Did you know that? The average weight of a locomotive is 216,000 pounds. Yep. No, 100, 100 tons, something like that. Okay, the, the other, this other building here where you see the trucks and the lo loading bays, this is our supply operations building. Everything in this yard, just because of the amount, amount uh, the size of operations here, we have our own supply department. Everything we use in this yard, whether it be from uh, pencils to locomotives, goes through supply. They order new switches, new rail, new locomotives, you name it, they order it. And so pre pretty much it's, it's like a mil almost like a military system. Uh, they say an army you know, uh, is only as good as a supply department. That's pretty much true in railroad operations too. Uh, you see that uh, flat car, or that, that gondola car over there, the little piles? All those, those are all metal shavings. When these locomotives go in there uh, to the shop, one of the things they do is they, they call uh, truing up the wheels. They'll take the wheels because after X amount of time on the tracks, steel wheels meet steel rails. Okay, they tend to get, the wheels tend to get deformed. 
So they'll put them on a lathe machine and they'll make those wheels round again. And that's where all the shavings come out to. So what did they do with the shavings? They, they sent it to a recycling plant. Really? Yeah. They, has that just been oxidized then, the other, the color difference? Yeah, the, 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 shine, the, the more gray or the shinier stuff, the newer stuff is newer. Okay. Then they'll fill up one of those, uh, on average, about one every week or so. Really? They'll fill one of those up. And you don't want to make the mistake of reaching your hand in there to grab a handful of it, either. <laughs> We've had some real geniuses try that one. Just a little bit. Well, the, this this facility right here doesn't do cars. The, the cars are done down uh, down to one spot, closer to the beginning of the tour. And all these locomotives we're seeing over here on the left hand side, these are all waiting to get into the shop. Uh, and it could be for anything. Maybe, maybe handbrakes are bad, maybe it just needs an inspection, uh, it could be anything. I, I don't know how many we have total, I know we have uh, uh, 2,000 mothballs right now in storage that we'll pull out as we need them. So it, what's actually actively working right now, I really couldn't tell you. Because it, 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 it varies dramatically by the by the season. The Union Pacific is very, very economy driven. 